States had deemed it that all Sioux should report back to their designated agencies or reservations uh, by the 31st of January, or they would be deemed hostiles and to that point hunted down, captured, imprisoned, or killed. And many returned, uh, but there were plenty who didn't, uh, in defiance, and just to say, this is our land. Um, the events before that were the, the Treaty of 1868 which and the Treaty of 1851. If you saw, ever saw a map of the Treaty of 1851 of what was the Great Sioux Reservation, you could see it was all of South Dakota, parts of Minnesota, Iowa, Nebraska, Wyoming, Montana, a good portion of North Dakota. Um, by the time the treaty was remade in 1868, it was reduced to the western half of South Dakota. And before this day in history, there was the gold rush. And there was an illegal expedition led by Custer into our hills. And when gold was discovered, you know, the settlers came in. And the, you know, the fights came with it. And when we were told, get back to your reservations, you know, this is no longer your land, they were given what was now, you know, the seven, the seven reservations scattered across South Dakota and North Dakota. And those who resisted, I have my own ancestor, my name is not Plume, it's, it's, it was shortened when we were all enrolled as United States citizens. My name is Iron Plume. My ancestor fought at the Little Bighorn, and he was killed a few months later at a place called Slim Buttes, if you've ever seen that. Um, and like, like I said, today is very special to us. You know, we, we always hear from someone who would say, we haven't forgotten 9-11. Well, we haven't forgotten things like Wounded Knee. We haven't forgotten a lot of the, the poor relationships that we've had with dealing with the United States. And especially like a day like today when we were called, you, know, you would be deemed hostile. When we would probably call that to somebody today where we would call them an insurgent. It's, you know, and you know, it, it was, it's really more of a thoughtful thing, you know, to where you stand with some issues with U.S. policy or you know, foreign relations, and today was the first step towards the Battle of the Little Bighorn. Today would have been that first step, and the words to that song, 
uh, when we fought Custer. And we always say we fought Custer, but it was the United States we were fighting. And when we, when the battle was over, the, you know, the man wrote the song, the man who composed the song, it said, you know, and he says, friend, where are you? He sings it several times. He's, he says, friend, where are you? Friend, where are you? Friend, I'm looking for you. you know? He said, Kola he said, friend, I'm crying for you. Because even though we had won this magnificent battle, you know, we still had lost friends and we still had lost family. And he tells them that, you know, the long knives, the, the cavalry, the men who were carrying the swords, they're running to the north, Waziata. You know, and he asked, friend, where are you? You know, and I'm still crying for you. And it's our, it's a victory song, but it's still also a sad song and a mournful song. And we use it to honor a lot of veterans and our traditional craft system. And, and that's, just a little tidbit in history for today, for January 31st, if you've ever wanted to know something like that. And I just thought we'd share that with you.